Well, welcome again. I'm Joey. I'm the Pathfinder Director. It's our uh, youth ministry program here at the Middletown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, from fifth grade to 12, we have adventurers who are younger. But we also, within that Pathfinder group, have a special um, training, which is teen leadership training. Um, it's for the older ones to kind of start taking leadership roles and do things like that. So today, we have a special treat. Uh, we have two of our TLTs here to uh, preach to us, to bring God's word to us. Um, we have Valentina, who's going to be up first, and then Allie. Um, they're going to be talking about the power of prayer, and I get the privilege of being around our wonderful youth at this place, and um, how they get to, I get to see them grow and develop and get closer to Christ, and they're, they're great energy, they're passionate, uh, you have two of the, the, the good ones here today, um, it's going to bring us the word, so be prepared to be taken to church. Valentina? Uh, the two sermons you will hear today are about the power of prayer. If God is so good, then why do things, bad things, happen to the world? I'm not going to answer that just yet. When I was eight years old, my mom told me, come on, help me pray for God to have mercy and get us out of here. So I did. I decided to push. This picture is my first day of school in Spain. I remember the day before when I went to enroll in that school, I sat on the bench right next to the door. Then about five or seven kids came up to me, which felt like 11, and they began asking me loads and loads of questions. One of them noticed that my watch marked the wrong hour. It still had the Pacific time zone, which was eight hours behind. And you wanna know what they did? They fixed it. That was a very significant and meaningful welcome to the country. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it might be my voice speaking, but I know it's your message that will be delivered. Help the people who are listening to this receive the message, the message that you want them to get. Thank you for being such a loving Father and for helping me write your message from the very first word to the last. In your name we pray, amen. We had prayed to God to help us leave Venezuela. Now we were in Spain, but God's plan wasn't over yet. So to the U.S. it was, and things ran kind of smoothly from there, at least from my perspective. I enrolled into Bowen Elementary. Uh, and got to get in one of those yellow school buses I'd always seen in the movies. From my parents' perspective, on the other hand, it was all a leap of faith. They didn't know if that was a good school or how the teachers would even treat me, especially since I had zero fluency in the English language, or if that school bus I got on earlier was even going to the right school. I mean, don't worry, it was. <laughs> uh, I couldn't understand anyone or anything that was happening around me. So I just sat in the back of my fourth grade classroom drawing all day. Once my first report card arrived, I was devastated. All U's, but hey, one D. <laughs> uh, I was so used to getting 20s back in Venezuela, which would be 100 here, and I had no way of knowing how to learn because no one taught me English. Like in my country, it, was, it became illegal to learn English for some reason. So I had no friends and no way of knowing if that girl in my class called me stupid or told me to stop it. God will take care of it, my mom said. Don't worry, it just requires time. She was right. So I decided to push. Did you know that it takes the average person seven years to learn English? All it took me was prayer, one year, and some very intense reading, kindergarten level. About three years ago, my brother, who was four months old at the time, was diagnosed with a tumor outside his left lung, which pushed all of his organs further to the right and made it really difficult for him to breathe. I was so worried and afraid that the tumor could be carcinogenic. I didn't want to lose my brother, and I didn't want him to be sick, so I decided to push. 
My parents were the ones who pushed the hardest. When little Kevin returned home, he came home with a successfully removed tumor and two working lungs. It was all a miracle. My little brother was a miracle indeed. Psalms 107 verse 28 says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Throughout my sermon, I kept on saying that I've been pushing. When things get tough, I push. Whenever I'm afraid or worried, I push. Whenever I need guidance, I push. I should probably explain what that means. You see, push is spelled P-U-S-H, which stands for pray until something happens. When things got difficult in Venezuela, I prayed until something happened. When we had to leave Spain, I prayed until something happened. When I couldn't speak English, I prayed until I could. And when my brother was in the hospital, I prayed until he was healed. I haven't been the only one pushing, though. My parents were the ones holding Jesus' hand all along. They have faith in him, and they taught me to pray when things get hard. In each scenario, me and my family have cried out to the Lord, and in each scenario, the Lord has delivered us from our distress. In Matthew verse seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 7, the Lord says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Without prayer, the world is like a tennis court. Just a tennis court, though. There's no park outside it. There's, in fact, nothing outside the tennis court. Just you and other people playing the game of life without any hope or purpose. Playing the game of life without God. Prayer is our way of communicating with God, and God is our only refuge. Prayer is our way of letting go of our problems and letting Jesus handle the rest. All we have to do is seek God, ask God, and have faith in God. I want to go back to my first question. If God is so good, then why do bad things happen to the world? Bad things happen because of the absence of God. We as Christians must seek him at all times, especially in times of need. He doesn't punish, so he doesn't make bad things happen to you. Instead, he forgives, and he offers us the gift of eternal life, as long as we follow him. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, this then, is the message, the, wait, this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So is God good? I mean, what can I say? God is light, God is the way, God is love. And God is our heavenly Father. So yes, God is good indeed. But when things get difficult, you ask him, why God? Why have you forsaken me? God has not forsaken you. He is just waiting for you to seek him. If you pray and God doesn't answer right away, it doesn't mean he isn't listening to you just means he has something better for you. Sure, it may take as long as maybe a few decades, maybe a few years, or it could take as little as a few days or even a few minutes. It can be frustrating sometimes, I understand, which is exactly why we need to be patient and have faith in him. You know what they say, faith is small as a mustard seed. When most people see good and bad, I try to see blessings and lessons. It's like that thing where some people see the glass half full or half empty. We need to try to hold on to God and never let go. For he is the light in the darkness and he is our refuge in desperate times. What I'm, about, what I'm about to read is a little poem that my parents received in one of the cards when my brother was in the hospital. And I really want to share it with you. It reads, no ocean can hold it back, no river can overtake it. No whirlwind can go faster, no army can defeat it. No law can stop it, no distance can slow it. No disease can cripple it, and no force on earth is more powerful or effective than the power of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, I hope the message that you helped me write today got to whoever it needed to get to. And thank you for being such a loving father and so loving with every single one of us. I know you have a plan for me, for us, for everyone in this room and this world. 
So thank you, Lord, for everything. And in your name we pray, amen. I'm not done yet, though. <laughs> the way to seek God is in prayer. And the only thing stronger than fear is hope. So don't worry or fear and find your strength in him. And if there's one thing I want you to remember from all of this, is that I want you to remember to push. I want you to remember to pray until something finally happens. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful, Valentina. It was very empowering. Good morning. Before I begin, I would like to pray also. Dear Lord, please be with every person here today, and please be with all of those who are watching. Please bless our world and the situation we are going through. Please help the words I speak not be my words, but your words. Thank you for being the God that you are. Amen. When I started thinking about how to write a sermon, I first thought it would probably do me some good to do some biblical research. I looked up verses on prayer, and I started a devotional on prayer also. Then I began to think, where have I seen prayer change someone in my life? Where have I seen prayer change my life? The first instance that came to mind was when I started preparing for my mission trip to Kenya. Before I registered, my mom asked, asked me, are you sure you want to do this? It will interfere with volleyball. I don't know how the season will go if you miss tryouts. My neighbor's family and I all prayed about it, and I set my mind on going, even if it meant I wasn't going to be able to play this season. My coach isn't the most approachable woman in the world. She had also informed my mother that if I decided to miss tryouts, I had no place on the team. My mom and I prayed and prayed and prayed. And when I told her I had been accepted to go on the, that, when I told her I had been accepted to go on the trip, she wouldn't kick me off the team. I was terrified. Finally, after practice one day, I walked up to her and said, Coach Buff, can we please talk? She, of course, agreed. I said, I was accepted to go to Kenya this summer on a mission trip, and I will be gone during tryouts and gone most of two-a-day practices. I had prepared myself mentally for her to tell me that I would not be able to try out and I would not be able to be part of her team. But God had worked in her heart, and I didn't know this yet. She gave me a hug. She does not give hugs, but she gave me a hug. And she said, we are so excited for you, Allie. We'll set up another time for you to try out, and we are so proud of you. Whoa, this is a complete opposite of the woman I thought I was about to talk to. I expected her to take me off of the team. I expected her to tell me not to come back. But God had worked in her heart, and I hadn't known that yet. And he had heard my prayers. This was the first time I had seen prayer really change an outcome and change a person. That wasn't where the praying and miracles stopped. I'd never really been prayed over before, but Maranatha, which is the organization I went on my mission trip with, said it would be beneficial to pray with people in preparation for your upcoming mission trip. Many people from church prayed with me. Miss Stephanie prayed with me, Miss Shiny prayed with me, and Miss Naomi prayed with me. Can I just say, if you need a prayer, those are three very good people to get a prayer from. They're very powerful prayers. I felt like all of the stress and worry about the trip was just taken. It felt like there was nothing that could stop me. I felt like God had wrapped me in a protective hug. Then the Sabbath before I left, the church prayed over me, and it was the exact same feeling. It was a feeling of safety and comfort. It was amazing. While I was in Kenya, I saw so many different people pray, and so many people pray in different ways. I heard people pray like they've been talking to a friend that they've had their entire life. I heard people pray like it was their favorite thing in the entire world to do. I heard people pour their entire hearts into prayer. I would pray with groups and over other people and at night before I went to bed. But I don't know if I was praying because I believed it was actually working or if I was praying because I thought that's what I was supposed to be doing. Later in the week, my phone and wallet were stolen. It had my money in it, and now I didn't have any way to talk to my family when I got back to the airport. I also lost all of the photos I had taken that week. I was devastated. I was also terrified. My first instinct was to look. So I looked and looked and looked, 
Then I told an adult and explained that my phone was zipped in my wallet, charging, and when I came back, the blocking cord was still there, but the phone and wallet were gone. The first thing she said to me was, let's pray. I agreed, and she took my hands and prayed that God's will would be done and that my phone would be returned and I would find comfort in him. At this point, I was crying. I was absolutely terrified that I wouldn't be able to find it home, and I was also terrified that my dad was going to kill me. <laughs> and I was supposed to show a PowerPoint of all the photos at church and talk about my experience, and now I don't have any photos, and I also don't have any money. I was upset. I started looking for it, and we started asking people if they had seen it. Then they said, let's try and find my iPhone. They couldn't pick up my phone because our phones had to be in airplane mode on the trip, so there was no way to locate it. I didn't know what to do. I had absolutely no idea. I had looked everywhere, and I had retraced my steps, but I hadn't found it. I decided to pray. I prayed that it would be found, and I prayed that I would get it all back. The next day, we informed the entire group with us so that they would be on the lookout. There was a nurse there that asked to pray with me, and I remember her prayer most vividly because it completely changed the way I saw prayer and completely changed the way I pray. She asked God to be with us and for everyone there, and then she asked a blessing over the person who had taken my phone and wallet. She prayed that they would return it because they felt God in their heart. She prayed that they would feel the Holy Spirit and do the right thing. When she prayed, when she said amen, I thanked her and I started thinking, maybe I've been praying the wrong prayer. I started to change my prayer to, Lord, please help them find you. Please use this to bring them to you. When I started praying like this, I felt a different comfort and a new sense of peace. I felt like I had a new strength, a strength in God. Then it was the day before we went back to the airport. I prayed that if I didn't get it back, that the money inside would help the person who had taken it in some way. I prayed that maybe the person who took it needed it more than I did and that it would help them. We left, and I never saw my phone again, but I com felt a completely new peace that maybe God had intended me to see how you can find comfort in prayer through this experience. Luckily, when the Maranatha leaders had collected all of our passports and put them in a safe at the beginning of the trip, I also gave them $80 in case something happened. So on my way home, I had money for food. Then we got to Switzerland on our way back. We found out that I would be flying separately from the group <laughs> that I had been flying with the rest of the time, and I would be going to New York and then to Chicago and not straight to Chicago. I've never been to New York before, and I was going to be completely by myself. Then Miss Debbie, which was the leader of our group, was teaching me how to read the flight board so in New York I would be able to find my flight and would know where to go. She put her hand on my back and said, um, when does your flight to Chicago leave from New York? I told her the time of that one, and she explained to me that my flight from Switzerland to New York had been delayed so much I was going to miss my flight from New York to Chicago. I was going to spend the night in New York, and I'm not old enough to get a hotel. I also don't have enough money to get a hotel room either. I was terrified and automatically felt a sense of panic. I also imagined myself spending the night on a park bench because I didn't know what else that I was supposed to be doing. Ms. Debbie then told me that we would go to the desk and ask if she could have a, my flight changed. She then said, let's pray about it first. She prayed that God's will would be done and that I would get home safely. We then went up to the desk and the lady there had obviously had a rough day. Ms. Debbie explained the situation to her and what all was happening. The lady looked at us and said, you have to call the airlines and follow the process, and there are no seats left on this flight, and to book a separate flight will cost you thousands of dollars. <laughs> okay, I was very scared. She was kind of snippy, and Miss Debbie very politely asked her what the phone number was. The, the lady then looked at me, and I was about to cry. I cried a lot on this trip. <laughs> But she looked at me and then looked at Miss Debbie and didn't say a word, but picked up the phone and started speaking German. We were both very confused. She then hung up the phone and said, you have the last seat on the plane. I'm now switching over your luggage. And then she hands me a new ticket. I thanked her and thanked her. And then Miss Debbie asked her how much it was going to be. She looked at us and said, there will be no charge. 
We thanked her again and walked away. Miss Debbie hugged me, and when we walked back to the group, it turned out they had been praying during this entire exchange. We then prayed a prayer of thanks to God for changing my rights and looking over me. God had answered my prayers, and I was going to get back home tomorrow, and I wasn't going to have to go all the way to New York. The entire trip showed me how prayer isn't just a thing that Christians do because we're supposed to, but it's a way to truly talk to God in a way that God really hears us. It showed me how powerful of a God we have and how powerful a prayer can be. Philippians 4, 6 says, Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I now understand what this verse means. I now know that we have to pray without ceasing, as 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says. Now I pray over most everything. I now pray because I know that prayer... I know the power that prayer holds, and I know the strength that God has and how powerful a God that we serve today. Happy Sabbath, and thank you.